Ah, yes, it is that time again for the Highland Sports Roundtable, and we have the crew back. No, John, taking off again, but but of course yes. you got Sean Cunningham, the Sean Cunningham, the Scott Marsh, the Harold Presley on the end, taking care of business so in the red shirt. Official, can we officially say jo John's no longer a part of the program? <laughs> well, you know, if, if it happens like another another week, it's a possibility. Yeah, then he's then he's outy. He's outy. That's he did awesome. leave a few notes for us that we wanted to, to talk about, but I think we kind of threw those away already. I yeah. kind of tossed mine. Yeah, we, we trashed those. We will though talk about the Kings of. Of course, we have to talk about the Kings. Uh, some ups and downs there. Warriors had a phenomenally ugly game. Oh, my gosh. Chat a little bit about that. Uh, spring training, of course. A big signing for the Giants in there. And uh, and a couple other fun things. But let's start, of course, right off the bat with the Kings. And i got to talk to Sean. Or anybody can jump in, of course. But i got to talk to Sean right off the bat. Because how do you beat the Timberwolves? You know, And I know this was a, w a little while ago now. You beat the Wolves. You come back and you lose at home to the, to the Bulls. I mean, you should win at home, right? You would think. I yeah. mean, I, I still get perplexed to see people who are still surprised by this. To see that a team like the Kings, who are good enough to beat anybody in the league, yeah. can lose to anybody in the league. And, you know, there's all this these tales of a players-only meeting before the, you know, after the following the loss to the Was Denver it a tale? Night. Yes, I mean, it happens after a film session. Okay. And Trey Lyles initiates this players-only meeting and, you know, they, they are able to hold each other accountable and then they're all surprised that Keegan Murray, of all people, is the one who kind of speaks up and surprises everybody. And then that? they go out and have this great showing without De'Aaron Fox that can beat the Timberwolves for the second time in Target Center in an overtime game, and you're feeling good. Yeah. You're coming back and you're facing your nemesis, which is a shorthanded team who's under 500. Yeah. And that's the team that it, that gives the Kings fits this season. We've seen it time and time again. And guys, this is just kind of who they are at this point. Yeah. It's what do you think, exactly man? right. I mean, it's the roller coaster Kings. You can right. just come up with a new yeah. nickname. I mean, they beat good teams on the road. They lose to bad teams at home. It is kind of life in the NBA. I mean, the Kings are not the only team doing this, so we can't hold them solely accountable, but it is frustrating. And, and certainly the game against the Bulls to be up 22 points again. That yes. number sounds familiar because yeah. it was the Phoenix number as well. And to lose that in the fourth quarter and to see DeMar DeRozan look like Michael Jordan in a Bulls uniform in that fourth quarter, it was kind of tough to take, Harold. Yeah. What I want to know from you, though, because you're the only one in this room right. that's been in a Kings team only meeting. What are the players' meetings actually like? Ooh, I mean, that one I can't actually tell you. You're not, not, you're not allowed <laughs> to. You've been sworn to secrecy. Do you have time there? You don't want to know that one. The Well, I'm going to back up and I'll. I'll let me just throw out how that worked out with uh, Fox not mm -hmm. in attendance that night playing on, they were on the road. Yeah, in Minnesota. And, uh, um, the team, the, the players will rally. And as we spoke about before, Fox being off the court, everybody has to jump in. They know they have to do more tonight because, because he's such an integral part of the actual game. He has the ball more than anybody on the court. Now, when that goes away, you're going to share the ball. So you're going to see the ball just moving and passing and open shots are going to open up and appear out of nowhere. Um, coming back, you got to get used to him again. Then you got to say, okay, well, well, we did that on last game, but yeah. he's back. So what do we do? How do we get through it? And it's a tough call because he is your best player. Yeah. He's absolutely your best player. But there's times where uh, him holding the ball too long is going to hurt the team a little bit. Yeah. So he's he's got to find a way to make sure that when things to start to slow down, that he can actually get the ball to the people who need it. Uh, Keegan Murray, mm -hmm. as you saw, he yeah. was outstanding without Fox. That doesn't mean he can't be outstanding with Fox. Well, his defense is incredible. His Keegan. defense has picked up. Yeah. He, he's really worked on it. It wasn't so uh, incredible at the end of the Bulls game. No. Well, Kusevich uh, rode right by him. Yeah. Granted, Keegan Murray was playing with five yeah. fouls, and Domas had just fouled out of that yeah. game. You but can't, yeah. You can't foul, but you got to help. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I, I believe that the team, obviously, Every time you lose, you learn. You learn more from your losses than your wins. Sure. So uh, as they keep going forward, they're going to learn more. I know people want them to be this team that can take that next step and get into yeah. the Western Conference final to 
to play for a chance for the NBA time. They're just not ready. They don't have the pieces still. Yeah. They're, they're learning and they're growing. It's going to be better this year, hopefully, than it was last year, but it's still not going to get us where we want mm-hmm. to be as Kings fans. Uh, but it's on the way. Yeah. It's on the way. Uh, I would love to see them play uh, at the end of the games with Fox. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also would like to see McGee get out there because you need to, as we saw against the Bulls, and you need to have somebody who's going to alter some shots. You need somebody who's going to go get those rebounds. You need somebody who does not need to have the ball to score. He does all of those things. I don't know why he's in a doghouse, but he's he's going to be a big part if they want to move on and get to the second round. You got to have somebody who's going to play some defense and block shots and go get those loose balls that nobody normally comes up with. Yeah, he will do that. Yeah, for, for, I mean, for the Bulls, White, you know, back in that game again, and I know it was a while ago, but White and DeRozan, they stepped up, and this time, you know, Fox couldn't. But we can't, you, I guess the Kings can't always count on him to do that. There's got to be other players that need to step up. Al uh, DeRozan, <laughs> although he's not a Michael Jordan, he's outstanding at the end of the game. You know what you're going to get at the end of the well, game. He had five he's points going, in the first half and then went off. He's going to it. score. He's going, they're yeah. going to give him the ball. They, they know where to go at the end of the game, and he's going to deliver. I mean, he does. he's known as Mr. Midrange. He goes seven for seven in that fourth quarter alone. But, Scott, like, we're Come watching on. him do a walk-up three. Yeah. Like, right. You knew they were onto something special, and they blew a 22-point lead, like you said. This is a team that just can't hold on to leads. Now, granted, that's kind of a familiar theme this year in the NBA where yep. big leads just aren't maybe what they used to be because no one plays defense like they used to when Harold played. But this You're is saying Harold played defense? Harold plays defense. <laughs> oh, I'm saying in the era. In the era. But, I mean, you I need to at, help, but I play defense. <laughs> play defense, Harold. But you look at it like I know there's – look, you mentioned it, the roller coaster. Yeah. Media, even the fans, but also the sure. team. The team is on this roller coaster team. They, they are just too. absolutely – heartbroken after every game and you'd think that they would have some a little bit more of a hey we're kind of used to this big mm-hmm. picture kind of let's look at this from 10,000 feet type yeah. of view look the good news is when you get in the postseason you don't have any of those sub 500 teams that are mm-hmm. going to be shorthanded you might have a shorthanded team like a phoenix who just lost yeah. devin booker to an injury and all these players like the clippers with who just had russell westbrook go out with a wrist injury yeah i mean there are injuries that are going to take place the kings have had been blessed with health and i think they are going to be suited for a good playoff run well, depending upon who they fa- face because well, look in a series this team has the ability okay to make things interesting in a series and i think Everything's kind of stay the course. It'll be okay. It's a very scary team to play. Right. You don't really want to draw them in the first round. No. They they can beat you if they just go out and play loose. <laughs> That's a tough. Kings well, are a tough well, team to beat. But they got to get there. I know we got our hot take coming up here, yeah. so I'll let you get to that because we're going to talk about whether they're going to get in the playoffs. Yeah, exactly. Not. Well, I'm just trying to calm it down here. It's getting a little <laughs> crazy, right? And we're still talking Kings, so we're uh, we're going to come back, uh, and then when we do, we'll talk about what Mike Rossler has to say. He's got our hot topic coming up right now too, and it's more Kings stuff. All right, take a listen. Hi, everyone. This is your hot topic for the week. The Kings on Monday lost a close one to the Chicago Bulls and uh, and, and are currently in seventh in the Western Conference uh, at 34 and 26. Um, Having a hard time with defense, having a hard time with some subpar teams, and uh, my Los Angeles Lakers are in ninth place. And uh, as we know, uh, the team seated seventh through tenth in each conference will compete in a playoff play in tournament at the end of the regular season. Um, my question for all of you today will the Kings um, finish in seventh through tenth place, or will they get to uh, the sixth position where they won't be required to? to participate in a play-in game. That's the question of the day and, and your hot topic for the day. All righty then. There you go. That's okay. uh, that's the hot topic. That's right. It was hot. Yeah, I like how Mike had to get into his, his uh, you know, his, yeah, his Lakers, though. He had to get into his Lakers oh, down his there, Lakers. you know. Lakers. Well, down there. His Lakers. Lakers. All right. So his Lakers are red hot, by the way. They are. Oh, my God. 10 yeah. to 14. Yeah. When, uh, as we record this right now. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, it, they're, they're hitting some. They're in their stride right now. D- yeah. The, and they're always scary with LeBron, which we'll get to him later on, too, with his 40,000 points, Mr. 40,000, whatever. Uh, let's talk about the hot topic. And what do we think? Are they going to finish inside the top six? Well, I, it looks like they're there, then they're there. And then the, mm-hmm. it's so it's so tight. Yeah. I don't think so. 
personally. Really? I don't think so. I think it's playing for the Kings this year. That's what I'm thinking. I actually do think they're going to avoid the play-in tournament by virtue of basically staying in the five or six range for most of the season. Mm -hmm. Again, they're healthy. I know there's you know right around 20 games remaining in the season now. I, I think this team will hit a stride. I mean, it's not going to surprise anybody for as much as the up and down of the roller coaster season that they've had and falling to some of these lower echelon opponents. I think they can get a little bit of a stride here. They've kept their head above 500. They do have characteristics of a 500 team, but I think they're going to hit their stride in the right time. I think they're going to be able to avoid it. And actually, if there's two teams, guys, that I'm not really believing in right now in the five and the six range, it's actually the Pelicans, who, by the way, own the Sacramento oh, Kings. I, I don't like the way that they're going to finish this season. I don't like the way they play. I don't like the way they're coached. And I'm not a big believer in the Suns, who I mentioned the Devin Booker injury a minute ago. Yes. That's going to hurt them. I don't think they have the depth. So if there's two teams that I think that will jump out of the play-in tournament and into the play-in postseason, or the playoffs postseason, I think it's the Kings and probably the Warriors. Okay, Whoa. I can buy I can buy all of that. The yeah. problem with the Pelicans, of course, they have the tiebreakers right. against this, right? They are playing well right now. To me, Pelicans are a top five team. Suns, I think, are a little different. Booker, how long he's out. Bill, yeah. if he can stay healthy. Obviously, Kevin Durant, we saw him beat Denver sure. in the fourth quarter. So this is a team that could stay there. I'm concerned about the Mavericks, another team that could move up that's behind the Kings right now that could potentially move into a, a playoff situation. So, But if I were to bet on it, I would say Kings hang on to a top six just because the schedule's so favorable. I can't even believe I'm saying that, but they got a lot of home games. So yeah, you don't want the home games now. should be good, but right. then again, I would put my house on this one, Harold. <laughs> I would actually... Well, I wouldn't put my house either. But, yeah. I put but, your house on. I wouldn't put my house on. <laughs> Let's put Gary's house on. Yeah. Uh, they're right where they need to be right now. They are in great position. Um, as you said, they had a team meeting. And yes. whenever a player calls that, they're serious. They're, they're excited. They're looking forward to finishing up this year in a positive way rather than let's just get through it, as New Orleans might be saying. So I am, I'm looking for good things for them going forward. Yes, getting in that top spot so they do not have to play in the play in game and not playing in that. Uh, and the, you don't want to play Denver. No matter what happens, that's the one team you don't want right. to play. Well, they did well and against them. You don't want to play them because yeah. they are moving. Yeah. They, they are a championship team that knows how to get it done. And they're moving forward in every chance they get. They show you how good they are at yeah. the end of the game. Yeah, you and they don't might close out the week, by the way, and uh, it, leading the, the West in first place. They I mean, know they're, how they're to creeping get it up right now. But and, that's the problem. You don't know where the top four teams are going to finish either, right? right. So, yeah. I mean, you just got to find a way to get into the top six yeah. and you're not knocked out in the play. Yeah. That's, that's the first Exactly step. where you don't want to be knocked yeah. out play on the play in or out of it completely but the play in is, that's a tough one because that's mm -hmm. that's a well you know, and you look i mean we've seen success i mean the lakers were able to get to the western conference finals after being in the play in tournament last year so miami went miami to the as finals. well goes yeah. to the finals i mean there's there's ways for there's mm -hmm. a pathway for success but there are teams that if i'm the kings i don't want any piece you of don't want you mentioned the pelicans but that's one of them <sighs> i wouldn't do if i'm a kings fan i don't want to see them nope. well we talked about the lakers real briefly about um 40, points yeah, for, for LeBron, LeBron James mm -hmm. but what they're doing is they're playing the young kids now yeah. they're, and they're excited they're happy to be on the court they're jumping all over the place they're, they're getting confidence so they're making shots and LeBron is getting confidence in them so he knows that he just needs to kick it he does what he does penetrate kick it to the open person they're hitting shots so yeah. they're scary that's not a team that you want to play in a play in yeah <laughs> alright you know, we mentioned the NBA obviously a lot of ups and downs mm -hmm. teams are supposed to win they don't win you know Kings are one of those teams too. The Warriors are starting to make a move. Then suddenly they're, they're like, all right, the Warriors are probably there. They go to Boston mm -hmm. and uh, it's 82 <laughs> to 38 at half. Yeah. So uh, let's go to Harold just real quickly. How does that happen as an NBA guy? I mean, come on. Uh, well, if anybody much, knows, it's, cold. it's Harold. <laughs> it's cold in Boston. <laughs> right. It's cold. Gotta, that's why they were cold. You got to get there. Uh, it, so they it didn't want to play? Is that what you're it, saying? No, it yeah. happens. I remember um, we were really struggling, but. Detroit came in and they won the national, I mean, they won the championship yep. that year. And <laughs> they come here and they're down by 40 points to the Sacramento Kings. And everybody's like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. uh, well, they had a pit stop 
and Reno, where they stay for <laughs> two nights. Yeah. Was Rodman on that team? <laughs> he was on well, that team. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. Holy so God. lucky for us, we yeah. had a monster. I had a monster game. <laughs> like, everybody should go to Reno or Tahoe before they come to Sacramento. Was Lam- yeah. Lambert just wasn't even playing then, probably? Oh, no, he you. played. And yeah, I mean, it didn't, didn't look anything. like he played. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been on the other side of that. I played yeah. against the Lakers when we're down 42 to 4 in the first quarter. What? Wow. And that was that was a horrible oh. Oh. I watched the whole game thinking, Coach, you know I can I can score. <laughs> Put I, me in for a second. I watched but, that game in real time. I remember that oh, game. Oh, I don't even remember it's that. 42 to 4? You would forget tough. it if you had seen it. Yeah. yeah. But but it was so crazy that shots that normally go in, dunks. Otis Thorpe was dunking the ball and it was just popping out. It's like, wow. what is going on? Free throws. Couldn't hit a free throw until the very end of the quarter. Are you talking about that Kings team or this year's Kings that team? That Kings team. <laughs> this team. This <laughs> team. <laughs> Kings this do. team is, is um, I like the fact that they, once they got past that time of, are we going to trade somebody? Yeah. The, the mentality changed and players who weren't playing so well are starting to step up. Now, yeah. you, you just need to implement a couple. One of the big things I will talk about in my 24 is you got to run plays. Yeah. You can't just stand around and hope that Fox or somebody just takes off and, and makes it happen. You got to start running plays. Right. All right. We got we got to get to this. Uh, you know, we got to have save some time for Caitlin, of course. We got to yeah. talk about that because she set the all time record. Uh, Caitlin Clark, University of Iowa, NCAA scoring, not just in, in women's, but also past Pistol Pete. So, I mean, I mean, wow. And she, the game was on, I mean, this is here in Sacramento. Sure. The game against Ohio State was on Fox 40, nationally televised game. People were watching that game. Drew so over she, 4 million people. She's bringing a lot of eyes to the game. It's and crazy. Travis Scott. Travis Scott in attendance, too. He yeah. showed up to fruit her on. How about that? I think, I think it's incredible. I mean, and you know what? It, it's, it's happening before the tournament. She's able to get a nice send-off at Iowa. Everything she means to that program, even with a year of eligibility left. I know it's the COVID thing, but uh, just incredible. And for her to, for, you know, you look at Pistol Pete's record and you go, okay, that's going to be broken mm-hmm. by a man. Yeah. Or a male athlete, mm-hmm. and it's done in the women's How great league. is that? It's unbelievable. Well, and the thing, too, for anybody to say, well, Pistol Pete only played three years. There wasn't a three-point line. Okay, those are sure. all fair things, but don't t- try and take away from Caitlin Clark, because yeah. that record stands on its own for what it is. It's remarkable. Yeah, that that was awesome. That is good stuff. Yeah, she's amazing. I, You know, I could sit there and watch every game she plays. She's that talented. Uh, I love the fact that she will put you to sleep. Night, night. She will do all that and stuff. And she leads the nation and assists, too. She knows how to back everything up. So I'm just a little concerned about making sure she makes all the money that yeah. she's making now in her NIL deal when she gets to the WNBA. The WNBA yeah. But yeah, Sean wow. has a, a response for that. So Well, yeah, I think good. the NIL gets to work. A lot of those endorsements can continue with her to go in WNBA. Her WNBA salary won't be big in in. in, in comparison sure. to other leagues because she's going to be on a rookie scale. But she also is likely, likely, I'm hearing that she will be a Jordan athlete. How about that? Have a nice That's new in the Jordans. Could be All right, we got to take a quick break. We're going to come right back here at Highland Sports Roundtable, wrap things up with a little spring training, a little baseball possibly, and whatever else we want to talk about. But of course, the 24-second shot clock, which is phenomenal. Don't go away. In need of your high school diploma? Have family, friends, or neighbors that need theirs? Highlands Community Charter and Technical Schools offers adults 22 years of age and older the opportunity to earn your U.S. high school diploma and learn a skill at the very same time, like truck driving, medical assisting, and early childhood education, to name just a few, all at no cost to you. So if you're 22 years of age and older without your U.S. high school diploma and would like to improve the quality of life for you and your family, visit diplomasarebetter.com. That's diplomasarebetter.com and click on the register now button. And remember, it's never too late to graduate. All right, we're back. We're winding things down on Highland Sports Roundtable. Harold's in the house. Scott's in the house. Sean here ready to go. I'm here. No, John. Who cares? <laughs> he's living the life, though. But you know, My John, goodness. wherever he's at right now, he's listening and he's watching. He's doing all those types of things. All right, let's finish off. We talked a lot about basketball. Uh, you know, we hit the NBA, the WNBA a little bit, NCAA. Uh, March Madness is right around the corner. Yes. Of course, that's going to start pretty soon. So we got to get our brackets ready to go. But let's hit some baseball. I know it's uh, still, still mm-hmm. spring training. Um, season's right around the corner. I know you guys are, you know, some of you guys are big baseball guys. Big signing by the Giants. Chapman, right? 18 mil. Huge. Is that big? Yeah, I mean, it is big because you're talking about a four-time gold glover. He won a gold glove last year. Uh, This is huge, but I don't know that the depth around the team is worthy enough of of having Matt Chapman. It's only going to be a one-year deal. Um, This guy's got uh, two opt-outs in his his deal. But uh, you know what? If it lands the likes of 
Blake Snell potentially, maybe in Montgomery. The, the pitching really needs to be addressed. They've got some some power around the lineup now. I love the Jorge Soler signing, but I don't think it's enough. You need yeah. a lot to go right in that crowded division where his Dodgers are just <laughs> unbelievable. It's a good signing. It's a Bob Melvin guy, too, yeah. so that helps with Chapman. Obviously, the Dodgers have taken all the oxygen out of it. It's not fair to compare the Giants or any other no. team to the Dodgers in the offseason. But if you'll collectively what the Giants have done now, it, you got to give them credit. They've made some moves. They've made their team better. Yeah. Harold, no. Like you can I chime in if you want. You don't have to. I knew they would yeah. eventually get around to picking up some people and, and making them run it. They, they yeah. do it each and every year. You can never count them out. Yeah, it's going to be tough for them to you get You can pretty to much it. count them out last year. Yeah, well. about 30 games. <laughs> <laughs> After. <laughs> but to start the season off, okay. you still yeah. got to think that's right. a bright spot. Yeah. Okay. All right. yeah. and they've got that, that's what you want. They've you got back-end want... pitching. I mean, guys like Robbie Ray, who just signed, he's not going to be available until like July. Yeah. Uh, to the, I mean, Logan Webb and that starting rotation is going to need a lot of help. But yeah. if, if you land someone like Snell, you're going to have my attention. Game changer. There you go. All right. Let's hit the A's real quick. It's not fully official yet if they do go to Las Vegas, but if they do, there's some renderings of an amazing arena that I, I came in before we started. I was like, holy cow, that is going to be so cool. It's, you know, it's artificial intelligence. It's AI right now. That's where they put it together. But man, if it looks like that, I think that's going to be absolutely incredible. It's going to sit right where the Tropicana uh, was, that hotel, iconic hotel. And it's, I, what do you think of that? If that comes through looking like that? Uh, honestly, I'll believe it if I see it. Okay. Once I see it, I, I just look at that and I go, I just can't picture it. I mean, yeah, we talked about it off here. Sydney Opera House for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like that. But then you see like the roof and this the whole how one of the whole panels is like a whole LED screen. I guess it's all nice in theory. I just don't believe it's gonna get done. Well if Vegas can build a sphere, sure. they can do something like that, sure. right? It, it fits for Vegas. Yeah. I have to say it's pretty cool. And whether it's AI generated or not, that's a different topic that people are getting into right now. But I mean it fits the Vegas strips. I will give them credit for that, although again I can't say I'm excited about A's Vegas talk, right? No. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. No. It really can't be around here. But then again, who is excited about the Raiders? You know, I'm Vegas excited Raiders. about all of it. Any team you know? that goes in there is going to do extremely well because you're getting go, people Harold, go. all over the country yeah. that want to go that to That might be Vegas. true, but I hate seeing a team leave the Bay, right? Well, they they, they got to do something. Mm -hmm. So if they're going to go somewhere, there's okay. there's a place That's to go. That's a good place. I'm looking forward for the time that an NBA team can land in Vegas. That's going and to happen. That's, that's, once expansion happens, 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 they're going it to Vegas. It has to happen. It's happening. It's, it's so beautiful that it doesn't matter where you, where you are in the country, you're a fan of somebody. If you're a fan of the Sacramento, not the Sacramento mm -hmm. Kings, we'll leave them out of it. Any kind of NBA team going into Vegas, they're going to fill up the arena. Football, we see the Raiders. They're coming from all over the country. Yeah. Uh, baseball, the A's, they're going to just show up just to go to a game. In but Vegas. Las Vegas is Lakers country. Don't discount that. I mean, if they get a new team, it well, might be Lakers aren't going anywhere. No, no, Lakers. that's not what I'm yeah. saying. They're getting an expansion team in Vegas yeah. if they get a team there. Yeah, whatever. Whoever shows up in Vegas, they're yeah. going to have fun. Whatever happens in Vegas, right? Bring it what? home. <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right so uh, anyway i'm excited to see if that stadium if it does look like that i think it would be fantastic put your tuxedos on and get ready for a performance it would be yeah exactly that's freedom that's, that's kind of what's like pitch. yeah well you know what if you're if you're a you know if you're a whale and you're rolling at the you know at the tables they're going to give you some tickets and then you and then you get in uh any spring training uh, stories we'll just throw out real fast if you guys have been to spring training we've got about a minute or so before we hit our uh, 24 second shot clock after the break but you know going down to spring training no but, I, I any mean, fun stories i love it I'd love to. It's it's my favorite time of year, especially for the Giants who are in Scottsdale. Scottsdale is just like the perfect vibe for so spring cool. training. Yeah. I mean, with respect to all these other teams that are everywhere, Scottsdale is a place to be. And uh, I think the only really major storyline is that all eyes are on Shohei Otani. No doubt everybody wants to see him. And spring training is the best because you can go see five or six games in three or four days. Yep. You can hit five or six different parks. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the Dodgers, I know it's been a little while now, but they used to be in the grapefruit. Now they're over here, so you can go to games. It was a great switch for the Dodgers home base, and they share it with the Chicago White Sox. So it's yeah. two teams in one stadium. Yeah. All I know is I'm going next year. It'll yes. be my first time in spring training. Yeah, we, I think we I'm mentioned going. that last time. Roadshow. you got to go. You'll I'm, love it. I'm there. you got to take me. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <I'm> coming. <laughs> yeah, well, you got the invite. You yeah, just got I'm the in. invite. You're going to do it. <laughs> All right. Um, when we come back, it is, of course, the 24 second. We're going to roll the old clock. John loves the clock, so we're going to hit that. we got 24 seconds to, to give our basic a hot take on what, uh, what we want to talk about. So we're coming right back on Highland Sports Roundtable. Don't go away. In need of your high school diploma? Have family, friends, or neighbors that need theirs? Highlands Community Charter and Technical Schools offers adults 22 years of age and older the opportunity to earn your U.S. high school diploma and learn a skill at the very same time, like truck driving, 
medical assisting, and early childhood education, to name just a few. All at no cost to you. So, if you're 22 years of age and older without your U.S. high school diploma and would like to improve the quality of life for you and your family, visit DiplomasAreBetter.com. That's DiplomasAreBetter.com and click on the Register Now button. And remember, it's never too late to graduate. Welcome back to Highland Sports Roundtable, and this is the final segment of uh, the show. And so this one, we wrap it up with our 24 seconds. And we, of course, with that one, we start all the way at the end with the man in the red shirt. Harold, take it away, my man. Okay, it's driving me crazy that the NBA, the high school, the NCAA, are nobody's running out of bounds underneath the basket place to try to score. Everybody throws it over the top and you have nothing to do but grab it and run some crazy play. All you gotta do is set up a play, try to score. It'll throw everybody off. Set up a play. Marsh, you're up. Fair enough. Jim Lassie, UC Davis runs great out of bounds plays. I got to <laughs> give him credit for that. Um, going back to Caitlin Clark, I think the most ridiculous take I heard was Jason Williams, former Duke point guard, who I know you love, Sean, um, but I'm going to kill him. An NBA analyst and college basketball analyst said that Caitlin Clark could be considered one of the all-time greats if she doesn't win a championship. That is ridiculous. She's one of the all-time greats regardless, Jason. Never he, needs more time. Scott he needs Marsh. more time. Scott Marsh is absolutely right. Mine's a potpourri. My NFL fandom right now is at half staff. RIP Chris Mortensen. We're going to miss you. And Peter King, who's retiring. Monday morning quarterback was such a pivotal part of my childhood. Shout out J.A. Donde into the, into the Basketball Hall of Fame. He's one of the best sports journalists there is. And keeping it with the topic of journalists, Chris Weber releasing a book later this year. Pre-order it now. Looking forward to that. It's called By God's Grace. I love that. I've never heard you talk that fast in my life. <laughs> when the 24 is on and we're watching a ticket, scary. All right, I'll finish off with because it is a national topic here. I'll finish off with the Bears and uh, Justin Fields. A lot of people think that they should be getting rid of him. I don't know why. I mean, he's been there for a while. He's just had some bad teams. He needs a good coach. He's got to be able to play. Uh, just let him run. Let him do his thing. He's got a great arm. Um, you know what? There's, there's no way that they're going to get anything better in the draft. I don't think at this point. I say keep Fields. And that's what they're going to do. Boom. Hey, guess what? I worked the clock the you right way. You got it. That was so Holy wow. cow, I was right nice. on the clock. <laughs> you're, you're the most improved Highland Sports Roundtable. Uh, clock yes, operator. Center. Yes. <laughs> the point was not only looking at the numbers ticking down, it was working the clock. <laughs> All right, let's wrap things up. Whatever you guys want to chat about to wrap things up, I know. Well, we, we sort of touched on it with, with LeBron James. I yeah. mean, obviously, 40,000 points. No one's gotten that before. He's been playing forever, so of course he's got 40,000 points. It would have been easy to do no, playing that long. No, I'm just kidding. He's, he's, he's old. <laughs> I'm kidding. And to be that age and to be still consistent yeah. and, and dominating at his age is remarkable. <laughs> um, but to even score that many points. It's insane. Oh, this is beautiful Can, what it is, he's it doing. Is. Can we yeah. not agree that regardless of who you think the GOAT is, whether it's MJ, some people want to say Bill Russell. Okay, I've heard some magic Wilt. conversation. Wilt, of course, absolutely. Can we not say that for length of career and just accomplishments over an entire career that LeBron is the best ever, just numbers-wise? He's really good. Not he's, saying he's, he's the greatest the of all time. He's in the conversation. It's just but hard for me to his, say any of that. His breadth of career. Yeah. I, 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 how can you, how can you argue that? Well, we were all there, basically. I think Harold yep. was probably there, too, when he started his career in Sacramento. I was actually, and who would have thought? He had I zero points when we saw him hit the court. <laughs> right? I saw him in his first game, and I'm yeah, pissed off that I don't have that ticket. I had it for like 15 years, and it's gone now. It's worth something now. Yep. But he, the, from the first time he stepped on the court, amazing. It was like, whoa, whoa that guy's going to yeah. be amazing for a lot of years. We didn't know it was going to be forever. We didn't know it was going to be 40000 All right, that's it. We're out of uh, stuff to talk about. Although, not really. We could keep on going on and on and on, but the show is over now. All right, well, thanks for watching Highland Sports roundtable we'll do it again next week california grow yeah yeah california grow